exponential growth and decay. Let's read some words. Exponential growth occurs when the population grows at a rate proportional to how many people there are. So you could say a population is growing by 4% each year, for example. Growth of time becomes an exponential function. It occurs in many different real life scenarios. So all these, for the most part, are examples of exponential growth. The human population has exhibits exponential growth usually. There's still other factors that can affect it. Bacteria definitely exhibit exponential growth. Radioactive substances exhibit exponential decay. Atmospheric pressure as you increase in elevation, exponential decay, and interest compounding continuously exhibit exponential growth. So here is one version of the exponential growth slash decay model. And I will point out in a little bit, there is another way of actually writing this equation, which I think is something we should mention because how many of you are taking the 17 series probably? Yeah, a lot of people in the 17 series, often they, they talk about writing this exciting. So we'll talk about that too. Um, I just want to point out why. So you should, when you see this equation, it's really very, 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 very similar to the continuously, continuously compounded interest equation. So this is the amount, not of money, just of stuff. This is the amount we have at time t. It can be the amount of people, or the amount of bacteria, or the amount of radioactive substance, or the amount of atmospheric pressure, etc. C is the initial amount of stuff you have. Okay. Or the amount of stuff at time zero. Usually we talk, we think of time zero being the initial moment where things start. Um, and then T obviously is time. I don't think I need to label it. Well, I, I guess it could, it doesn't always have represent time. So we could be using different variables. T could represent or whatever you think could represent something else. So let's go ahead and actually specify. T is time. And then K there, K is the rate or also it's called the constant of proportionality. Now, what I wanna make really exceptionally clear, proportionality, is I can't spell proportionality, I'm sorry. Bro. What I wanna make really exceptionally clear is, if we were doing this example where the population was growing at 4% per year, it doesn't necessarily mean our K would be 0 0.04. Right? There's a slightly different process for finding what K is. So don't just make the assumption that the rate of proportionality is the rate you're being I know that seems kind of like counterintuitive because, oh, James, you said it's the rate. I know, but that's kind of not how this works out exactly. So bear with me. Um, let's look at an example. Consider a medical researcher studying a newly discovered species of bacteria. At time zero, we have 100 bacteria into a favorable growth medium. And the growth of the bacteria follows the equation y of t equals 100 e to the 0 0.25 times t, where t is in hours. So we're going to plug in some numbers. And actually, I'm going to get four there as well. So let's see what we get. At time 0, we're going to get 100. y of 0 is going to be 100 times e to the 0, or I should say e to the 0 0.25 times 0, which is e to the 0, which is 100. And that's our c value. You can totally see, ha ha ha, right there. Five times a day. Okay, and then we can plug in y, uh, sorry, t equals one. Y of one is just gonna be 100 times e to the 0 0.25 times one. Now I would need a calculator to do this. What I did ahead of time? That's gonna be 128, approximately, right? Not exactly, approximately. We keep going this way. Y of two is going to be 100 times e to the 0 0.25 times two. 
and using a calculator, I'm going to get about 165. And the t equals three. Don't worry, there is a point. I'm going to get 100 times e to the 0 0.25 times three, which is going to be about 212. And when we plug in four, you're going to get 100 times e to the four times 0 0.25, which is just one. And that's going to be about 271. And the point I want to make, question, yeah. No, go ahead. Of course, no, don't, don't, don't hate to be that person. Be that person. If you need to see the things I'm writing, it's okay every time. Um, so the thing I want to really emphasize here is that the growth is not linear. Right? In each time interval, which is the same amount of time, right? We're going from day zero to day one or days, hours. I didn't really say, oh, it's even hours. So in the first hour, we're going to grow by 28 bacteria. In the second hour, we're going to grow by 37 bacteria. In the fourth or the next hour, we're going to grow by 47 bacteria. In the next hour, we're going to grow by um, not 60, but 59 bacteria. So the amount we're growing by each hour is increasing. And that's again because the growth rate is proportional to the amount of bacteria there are. The more bacteria we have, the faster they're going to grow. That's the whole idea of exponential growth slash decay. Yeah. Um, for t equals zero, why did we put at the end 100 equals c? Is it just to show that like the value of the value? Just to point out that this that, that c constant there is always going to be your initial value. Exactly why. So exponential growth is exponential, right? It's growing faster and faster and faster as we move further and further out. And so it would look somewhat like this. Our growth would start at 100, or I should, I should say our amount would start at 100, and we kind of just go slowly at first, but then it really ramps up. So in the beginning, the growth is typically slow. And the end, it's rapid. If for exponential growth. Um, one thing I do want to mention also is when something's growing exponentially, or we have an exponential like curve, we're not going to see a vertical aspect. I know sometimes it might look like this might just go straight up. It never goes straight up because you can always put in a larger and larger value for time. Right, I could pick time equal to anything. Like if time a full day later, 24 hours, y of 24 is going to be e to the 0 0.25 times 24, which is going to be very large, about 40,403. So, right, things get out of control very quickly with exponential growth. But what I'm trying to point out here is that you could pick any number of hours, right? You could, right? You could pick a thousand hours, a million hours, right? There's no stopping how long you can let this go on for. Assuming, right? We're not thinking about like the biological constraints of the petri dish or whatever, right? We're just assuming it could grow forever, and right? We're not talking about real world stuff. It's math, right? It's not the real world. Okay, so um, let's look at some more examples. How long a bacteria is growing exponentially in a petri dish? Initially, there are 40 bacterial cells. Two hours later, there are 120. Find the behavior model of the growth of the bacteria. So all that means is that when actually, I'm going to say two different things here. It means if you're thinking of your model as y equals c e to the kt, your job is to find c and k. Right? We want to find the model. And the model is this thing, just knowing what the constant here is and the constant there is. Now I am going to show you another way to do this because I think it's valid, but let's do it the, the quote unquote normal way I am used to doing it first. So I would make a little table with all my information. On the left side, time. On the right side, y, the amount of bacteria. And I know that time equals zero. I have 40 bacteria. And two hours later, so time equals two, I have 120 bacteria. So, What's our C value, everybody? 40. Right, well, C is 40. You can do the work 
if you want to, and you could plug in zero for T and 40 for C and solve for Y and get, or sorry, zero for T and 40 for Y and solve for C and get C. Or in fact, I'll do it one time, but I don't think any of you need to do this work. Here. So I can take that and be like, okay, Y is 40, time is zero, K times zero is zero, and E to the zero is one. So 40 equals C times one. Oh, C equals 40. We all knew that. None of you need to show this work, as far as I'm concerned. You can, it's perfectly fine to, but it's not required. Okay, so now we're going to use the other piece of information to find the other unknown, which is K. I'm going to take that and plug it in. So I'm going to use the known C value now. So I have Y equals 40 E to the KT. And then I'm going to plug in 120 for Y and two for T. And I don't love this pen. It's fine, but it's just it's a little thick. So divide both sides by 40. You get three equal to E to the two K. Take the natural log of both sides. And the natural log of E to the two K is what? Just two K. So we end up getting K equal to the natural log of three divided by two, or you could say it's one half the natural log of three. If you want to point out, this is not the natural log of three halves. It's the natural log of three divided by two. So here's what our model would look like. Plugging in our now known K and C value into the model, we would have Y equal to 40 E to the natural log of three over two times T. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about an alternative for just a minute here. There is another way of finding the model, which you might feel like is easier. I might feel like it's easier. Um, in two hours, what does the population do? Well, that's not a very good question. You could say, James, it increases by 80. I'd be like, well, yeah, that's true. OK. From time equals 0 to time equals 2, the population multiplies by how much? 3. That's an important piece of information. Because what's true about exponential growth or exponential decay is the amount of time it takes to multiply by a certain factor is always the same. So even though we didn't write it down, it is true that in another two hours, the population would triple again. And you have 360. That's how exponential growth works. It's always the same amount of time to double or triple or quadruple or quintuple, which is why people often talk about what's the doubling time for a population because it's always supposed to be a constant amount of time if you're talking about exponential growth. So for this particular population of bacteria, the tripling time is two hours. It always takes two hours to triple. If you know that, it's actually really easy to write down the equation for exponential growth. So in two hours, the population triples. So here's what we need. We need, I'm going to leave some space. Oh, yep. We need three to the T over two. We need something else, but that's most of what we need. Because think about it. When time is zero, zero over two is zero, and three to the zero is one. So you're gonna take, oh, well, we need 40 there then, right? When T is zero, we get 40 times one. And when T is three, in fact, let's write this down. I know we already got written it down, but it's good to write it down. Here. So the time is zero. We're going to get 40 times three to the zero, which is 40 times one, which is 40. And when time is two, we're going to get 40 times three to the, what's two over two? And what's three to the first power? 40 times three is, so here's the thing. Every time we increase T by two, this t divided by two is going to be the next integer. 
which means we're going to get three to the next power, which means we're going to multiply by another three. So if t was equal to four, we'd get 40 times three to the four over two. So four over two is two, and we're just getting three squared times 40. We get another multiple of three. So if you know the multiplying factor, and the time it takes to do that, you can write the exponential growth equation very, very easily. Now, I will point out this equation, y equals 40 times three to the t over two. Well, actually, I'll first I'll point out, it's not 120 to the t over two, and we can't multiply the 40 times the three because the three is raised to a power that you have to do before you do the But I will point out that this, is literally the same as y equals what we already found before, 40 times e to the, yeah, natural log of three over two times two. Those are the same equations. And if you want to see that, here's how we see it. Take this equation and do some exponential magic. That's not magic, it's just math. I'm gonna write this e to the natural log of three over two times t, so it is a little bit wonky though. It's, I'm writing it's e to the t over two times the natural log of three. And then I'm gonna bring that t over two up as the power of the three. So I'm gonna get 40 times e to the natural log of three to the t over two. And then e to the natural log of some stuff is just the stuff. This is going to end up being 40 times 3 to the t over 2. Oh, it's the same. So here's the point. You can do it either way. I personally have always learned it the first way I showed it to you, so that's the way I usually think about doing it. But I will fully admit this feels easier and kind of more logical in a lot of ways. Right? If you know it takes two hours to triple, then we should have three to the t over two power because every time you increase t by two, you're going to get another multiple of three. So I think that seems very logical. If you prefer to do it that way, you can and should do it that way. And I also think this is how it often gets presented in the 17 series. So that's also why it's worth mentioning. Okay. So back to what we're doing here. How many bacteria will there be in five hours? So we're going to set time equal to five. And we can either write our answer as y equals 40 times e to the natural log of 3 divided by 2 times 5, which is approximately, if you use a calculator, 624. Or you can plug it into the other equation and say y equals 40 times 3 to the 5 over 2. And that would give you the same it also seems to me that plugging the second one into a calculator would probably be a little bit easier. Yeah, not even probably. It's for sure easier, right? I mean, no, no, I guess the only thing that might not be easy is there's definitely an E to the whatever button on everyone's calculator, very easy to find. Finding the three to the whatever button is a little bit, it's like the X to the Y button. So there are two types of questions we usually ask when we're talking about exponential growth or exponential decay. How much stuff do I have after how much time has gone by? So after five hours, how much stuff is there? I can ask you a how much stuff is there question, or I can ask you a how long does it take question. So how much stuff is there after five hours, or how long does it take until I have double the stuff I started with? Those are the only real types of questions you can ask. How long until I have this much, or how much or how much stuff do I have at this time? I can give you an amount, ask for a time. I can give you a time, ask for an amount. Um, I just have a question about what you did on the executive. Yeah. Would you, um, post that oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Don't worry, we're going to see it again. Um, how exactly is it that it becomes y equals that times the three to the five over two times the natural log of three over two? So we're asked, so, so, so I'll remind you the equation, the alternative equation, instead of this model up here, yeah. we said an alternative model was y equals 40 times three to the t over two. 
That's an e the, the, they are the same. And so we're just plugging into equals five. Okay. So how long for the population to double? Well, what's double? So whenever they say double, it's double from what you started with. So how much did we start with? Right. So double, we're going to set y equal to 80. And again, you can either say, okay, well, I'm going to set 40e to the natural log of 3 over 2 times t equal to 80, or 40 times 3 to the t over 2 equal to 80. Either way, our first step should be to divide both sides by 40. And whenever you're solving for the exponent, you always want to get rid of that coefficient. So here you've got e to the natural log of 3 over 2 times t equal to 80 over 40 is 2. Not surprising that it equals 2 if we're talking about doubling time, how long it takes to double. If I asked how long it take, took to triple, we would set this equal to 120, and then we would divide both sides by 40, and you get this equal to 3. It's not a surprise. Or this way, we would have 3 to the t over 2 equal to 2. And then either way, I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. This one seems reasonable, right? Natural log of e, well, reasonable in that the base is e. Natural log of e to the natural log of 3 over 2 times t is equal to the natural log of 2. And here's where we're going to see the, the natural log of e to the stuff a lot. The natural log of e to the stuff is just the stuff. So the natural log of e to the all this terribleness up here, natural log of e to the that is just that. So we get the natural log of 3 divided by 2 times t equal to the natural log of 2. And then I want to solve for t. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2, divide both sides by natural log of 3. So I end up getting t equal to 2 times natural log of 2 divided by natural log of 3. And this doesn't really simplify. I suppose you could say it's natural log of 4 divided by natural log of 3 if you wanted to bring the 2 up as the power, but you don't need to do that. But what I'm saying is that this doesn't, this doesn't become one natural log of like two thirds, right? That's the different rule. That, or that, right, that isn't a rule for this thing. Um, this is approximately 1.26 hours, which makes sense in that we know it should have been less than two hours because in two hours it triples. How do we get natural log of three in the denominator? So what I did to both sides here was I multiplied both sides by two over natural log of three. Can you, just divide both sides by you could divide both sides by natural log of three over two. However, if you do that, then you get fractions and fractions. And I'm trying to avoid that. So you could totally say your answer is natural log of two divided by the natural log of three over two. But then you need to flip and multiply, which is kind of what I was trying to avoid. So either way, I mean, yes, you're right. You can totally do it that way. You just have to do another step of simplification. We would get the same answer doing it this way. I'm going to run out of room, though. So let's see. I've got the natural log of 3 to the t over 2 equal to the natural log of 2. I would bring the t over 2 down. So t over 2 times the natural log of 3 equals the natural log of 2. And look, we're in the same place. We have t times natural log of 3 over 2 equals the natural log of 2. You get the same answer. Sorry, I know it's a little scrunched in here. So we do end up getting t equal to. 2 times the natural log of 2 divided by the natural log of 2. So I really, really, really want to emphasize they're the same formula. They just look different. So one of them might be easier for you to deal with. Yeah. How do we know if we should take the natural log of the number? Like, like in this one right here? Yeah. So the way, so really you could use any log base you want. But it's pretty standard to use natural log. But you could use log base 10, you could use log base 3, but we typically use natural log. So what's it doing for us? Exactly. So why are we taking the natural log of both sides? Well, what am I trying to solve for? T. And where is T living before I take the natural log? Up in the exponent. And the logarithm is really the only tool we have that allows us to get something out of the exponent. So that's why we're taking the natural log. Whenever we're trying to solve 
something where it's like two to the x equals five or something where the variable is living in the exponent. Mm -hmm. Taking the log of both sides allows us to use that logarithm rule and bring it down in front. That's a really good question because that's what you should always think about is, oh, I have a variable in the exponent. How do I get it out of it? Oh, the only tool I have to get it out is taking the log of both sides, any log you want, but use the natural log, unless there's a really good reason not to, and then bringing that whole entire exponent down in front of the logarithm. Yeah, right. Some more examples. Radioactive waste is often dumped in the middle of the desert and left to decay. Which sounds kind of terrible, but oh, you guys can you can see what I'm saying. I mean, you can hear what I'm saying. A 12 gram sample of a radioactive substance decays to 10 grams in 25 days. How long will it take for half the substance to decay? Also known as the half life. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my usual James version of the model. Y equals C to the KC. You could also, if you prefer, I'm just gonna write both. You can also start with something like y equals c times, let's call it, I don't know, b to the t over. I'm just making up letters, really. Those are not, but so the c is the same, the b and the a are not the same. We'll look at this in a second. What am I gonna write down? The stuff I know. I know that at the beginning, when I dumped the waste, not that it was me, but you know, at time equals zero, there were 12 grams of radioactive substance. And then 25 days later, there were 10 grams. And I can use that to fill in the information. I know, well, in fact, I'm just going to go straight to, I've got y equal to 12 e to the kt. I know the initial amount is 12. I don't need to work hard to figure it out. But then I am gonna figure out K. So I'm gonna use the other piece of information to find K. So I'm gonna get 10 equal to 12 E to the K times 25. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 10, sorry, divide both sides by 12. I get 10 twelfths equal to e to the, oh, sorry, thank you. Usually I rewrite k times 25 as 25k. It's not necessary, it's just typical. And then you don't have to, but it makes sense to reduce this fraction. I'm right, this is 5, 6 equal to e to the 25k. And now if we're trying to solve for k, which is in the exponent, what are we going to do to both sides? Take the log, the natural log. The natural log of 5, 6 equals the natural log of e to the 25k. What's the natural log of e to the 25k? Everybody. Right, 25k. So natural log of 5, 6 equals 25k. And finally, we can isolate k by dividing both sides by 25. So the natural log of 5, 6 divided by 25 is equal to k. So here's our model. Our model doing it this way is y, oh, sorry, you guys can see that. y equal to, so I'm going to zoom out for a minute, but I'll zoom back in, I promise. Just so you can see all the things at once. y equal to 12e e to the, k is always kind of gross doing it this way. Natural log of 5, 6 over 25 times t. There's our model. Okay. Doing it this other way is a little bit harder for this particular example because we don't, it's not the thing that happens in 25 days is not like it multiplies by 2 or multiplies by 3. How much does it multiply by in 25 days? Well, 12 times what equals 10? 5, 6. 5, 6, right? So, but really, to figure out what it multiplies by, 
all you have to do is take the thing you have at the end and divide it by the thing you had at the beginning. So to get from there to there, you're multiplying by 10 twelfths, which is five six. You can always figure it out, right? It's literally just take the later thing, divide it by the earlier thing. So this particular radioactive substance multiplies by five six every 25 days. So another 25 days later, right, in 50 days from the beginning, I would have 10 grams times five six, which would be something not very nice, right? 56, 25 thirds. 8.333 forever. And then in another 25 days, you'd multiply by another five, six, right? That's the whole deal with exponential growth and decay. Each same time period, you multiply by the same factor. And this is decay, right? Because we're getting less every time. Okay, so now we can figure out what this is. I know I'm starting with 12 grams. I know that the amount I am multiplying by every time is five, six. So that's what my base is here. And then how long does it take to get that? How many days does it take to multiply by five, six? So I'm going to have T over 25. And I always like to do a quick little check. If I plugged in T equals zero, five, six to the zero is one. 12 times one is 12. Great. If I plug in T equal to 25, 25 over 25 is 1, 5, 6 to the first is 5, 6, and 12 times 5, 6 is 10. So it is working, right? It's giving me the same output when I put in the same inputs. Obviously, this takes a lot less work, right? I mean, look how much more, less work I did to do that. It does require more thinking, I feel like. this. So this, I feel like, you can really just kind of plug and chug, right? You just like put the numbers in, do the stuff, and get the final answer. This one, there's obviously less doing that. But I do feel like you have to be more thoughtful about what's happening here to really know how to do this. So either way is fine. Just be careful. We're not done. We we found the model. So you can say that's the model or that's the model. But now we have to answer the question, which is what's the half life? So to find the half life, are we asking for a time or an amount? We're asking for a time. We're asking how long until there's how much? Half, which is how much do we start with? All right, so how long until we have six grams? All my pens are there. So let's go ahead and do it the other kind of, let's do it this way first, just for fun. So I'm going to set six equal to 12 times five, six to the T over 25. And then I'm going to solve for T. Solving for T is a very similar process to solving for K, right? You're still getting rid of this coefficient by dividing both sides by 12. So 6 twelfths equals 5, 6 to the T over 25. Notice that we're finding the half life and we ended up getting our thing to the power equal to one half. That again is not a coincidence. That should happen if you're finding the half life. So one half equals five six to the t over twenty five. Take the natural log of both sides to get the t out of the exponent. So natural log of one half equals the natural log of five six to the t over twenty five. The t over twenty five needs to come down in front. That's why we took the natural log. Then I have the natural log of one half equal to T over 25 times the natural log of 5, 6. And as Erica was saying, you totally could divide both sides by the natural log of 5, 6 over 25. But I'm going to show you the steps now since I have a little more space. First, I'm going to multiply both sides by 25. So 25 times the natural log of 1 half equals 25 times T over 25. Oh, those cancel times the natural log of 5, 6. And then to isolate T, I'm going to divide both sides by the natural log of 5, 6. So I'm getting 25 times natural log of one half divided by the natural log of five six equal to t. And that is my half-life. And it's approximately 95.04 days. 
Is that how long it takes for there to be half of what we have? Yeah, question. Um, I think you already said this. Let me take it. Go ahead. For the half-life, you can theoretically use the other equation. No, yes, definitely. Yeah. So we, we certainly could have. In fact, let's go ahead and look at that real quick. We could have done it the other way. So we could have instead said, oh, yeah, we're going to add. Okay, I should put this. Okay. So we could have taken this equation and set that equal to six. So it could have been, all right, 12, sorry, six equal to 12e to the natural log of five, six over 25t. We could have done that instead. And they both feel like pretty much the same amount of work. You might, you should do whatever you want. I'm gonna divide, I mean, as long as it's right. So we divide both sides by 12, then we would take the natural log of both sides and we would get the natural log of 6 12, so the natural log of one half equal to the natural log of e to all this stuff. Definitely this way feels like you have to write more. And then the natural log of e to a thing is just the thing. So we end up getting the natural log of one half equals just this stuff up here. Natural log of five, six over 25 times T. And then we're back in the same place we were for the other problem, right? We are you know, literally right here. The same equation. It maybe looks a tiny bit different, but it's not. It's the same. And then we would multiply both sides by 25. Divide both sides by natural log of 5, 6. So, yes, either way is totally acceptable. I'm trying to give you options. Last page, really? I have one more page. I'm like, did I lose a page here? What's your next question? Yeah, okay, but there's a page after that too? Yeah. About what? Okay, well, yeah, that's weird. I'll do a minus. <clears throat> well, we won't worry about that right this minute. It's fine. Two months ago, you had three mice. Now you have 18. Or when population size B in two more months, the population of mice is growing exponentially. This is what's that? <laughs> no, uh, like I don't know. So, this is a great example of when it's definitely, I think, ideal to use the other version of the equation, right? The second version. Here's what I mean, right? So, I know, well, first of all, I don't know how much mice I'm starting with, right? So, this is so the problem with this question is the two months ago part. I don't love that. So personally, here's what I would choose to do. I would choose to say two months ago is time equals zero. It's a perfectly fine, valid, normal choice to make. So we could say, okay, at time equals zero, that's my two months ago, I'm going to have three mice. So time, mice. And then, well, now, so when would now be in this context? Two months after my initial time. So the time equals two months after two months ago, which is now, I have 18 months. Here's two months ago. And here is now. So let me ask you all. In fact, we could just, I think we could see what the answer is without even, so I'm, we're going to still do a little bit of work, but I bet we could guess the answer. In two more months, well, what factor did the population multiply by in the first two months? And what factor are they going to multiply by in the next two months? Six again. So our population should be six times 18. This is going to be something, 108, I think. Here, so that's probably, I would probably want to see a little more work than that, but eh, maybe not, I don't know. Here's the work I would kind of want to show. So my model 
Well, I'm going to I'm going to take the quote unquote better route, and my model is going to be the number of mice at time t. I'm going to call it m of t. Sounds fun. You could call your function anything you want. Y of t, y, a of t, right? We use lots of different names. We use we write the formula hundreds of different ways. Y equals c e to the kt is kind of most typical, but m of t equal to c times. Okay, what's my what's the number that I'm going to put there? I'm doing it the second way. Oh yeah, it's going to be six, and it's going to be raised to the over what? Right, because every two hours I multiply by another multiple of six. And then I guess I should have plugged in what C is. C is, when depending on how you want to do this, you could totally do it one of two ways. You can say, oh, M of T is three times six to the T over two. This version would be where two months ago, is time equal to zero. That'll be perfectly fine. Because when time equals zero, you're going to get three. But writing it this way also makes it easy to see that we could have done it like this. So that now is t equals zero. Each of these would be fine. The only difference is for this one, we would then want to find m of four and see what happens in two months from now, right? Because four months from two months ago is two months from, right? It's terrible. I'm saying too many words. But four months from two months ago is two months from now. So you get three times six to the four over two. Oh, yeah, that's three times six squared, which is three times 36, which is definitely 108. Or this equation, well, if now is time equals zero, then two months later would be time equal to two. And you get the same result. You get 18 times six to the two over two, which is 18 times six, which is 100. I will point out that the notes that are posted from last time I taught this definitely look different than this, right? In the notes I posted last time, I definitely go through the whole finding the C E to the KT thing and doing that. So that is also an option. You can do it either way you want. I'm just trying to show you both. But I will also mention doing it the other way was a lot more work. Question. Right. Right. So so I'm showing you what I'm trying to show you here is there are two different ways you can think about this. This green way corresponds to what I've got up here, where time equals zero was when we had three mice, time equals two was when we had 18 mice, time equals four was when we had 108 mice. But you could have also set it up down here. You could have also said, well, I actually want to kind of do it the way they have said it, meaning I would like two months ago, and two months ago, I feel terrible writing this, but I'm going to say two months ago is time equals negative two feels wrong, but it's not wrong. It's just weird. And then the number of mice two months ago would be three. And then the time equals zero, which is now, we'd have 18 mice. And then the time equals two months from now, we'd have 108 mice. So sometimes they give you weird information. Sometimes they don't tell you how many you start with. And that's when you kind of have to do, you kind of have to do one of two things. You can either reframe how time works not how time works, but like how the time is working in your problem. Or you can um, not do that and kind of then have to work a little bit harder to change the right. Time two. Oh, yeah, we got time. So does that clarify? I think. I hope. Okay. What I would say is I would probably think, I would more typically think of it this first, this first way. That's the way I would like to do it. I would always like to say, the initial information I have, I'm going to say that's time zero, because that's usually the easiest thing to do. I'm all about making it easy if I can. Okay. Find the half life of a radioactive material if, after three years, 20% of the material has decayed. All right. I'm still going to make my table. 
time stuff. Um, how much did I start with? We don't know. When you don't know, make up a number. Make up a convenient number. What number is really convenient to take percentages of? 100. You can also use one, you can also use C, and I always stick to 100. So I know that at time equals zero, I have 100%, 100 percent, 100 grams, 100 pounds, 100 whatevers. But I know that three years later, how much do I have? 80. I will remind you, I don't have 20, right? So the radioactive decay model is always talking about how much stuff you have. Because they tell you it decays by this much, it means you have what's left over. All right. So I could either go y equals c e to the k t. I know my c is going to be 100. And then I can plug in my 3 and my 80. 80 for y, 3 for t, to find k. Divide both sides by 100. 80 divided by 100 is 0.8 or 4 fifths. Either way you want, I'm right, 0.8. Equal d to the 3k. Take the natural log of both sides. Let's see. It's kind of the same process every time. Yep. And then it's funny because I'm always like, I'm going to move it up because like you move it down, guys. But you want to move the camera down. Paper up. All right. Then natural log of e to the stuff is just the stuff. It's like 3k times. I mean, so here I started writing times because I was actually thinking of it as just bringing the 3k down and getting 3k times the natural log of e. The natural log of e is just one. So then k is equal to the natural log of 0 0.8 divided by 3. So our model, doing it the long way, is y equal to Yes, I can. No, no, don't, don't never. You don't have to apologize. You need to see what I'm writing. I mean, it's not all gold, but it is something important. So there's our model, the long way 100 times e to the kt, or the short way y equal to, okay, my initial amount's 100. What's my multiplying factor from my first data point to my second data point? Oh, you're so close. 0.8, right? It's point, not, it's not, it's not, we're losing 0.2, but we're having point. So I want to make a point here. It's always going to be this number here that you get after you divided by 100 or divided by whatever the C value is, right? That's what it was in the other problems too. Um, that one's not so good. I'm going to all over the place here. Sorry. Specifically, in our previous decay problem, right, when we were doing it this way, when we divided both sides by the coefficient 12, we got 5, 6. And 5, 6 was our multiplying factor from there to there. And the same was true in our very first problem as well. Right? When, we, when we were solving for this here, sorry, brain. When we were solving here, we divided both sides by 40, we got 3 e to the 2k. And 3 was our multiplication factor there. So the multiplication factor is not hard to find, but it just takes a little bit of C, I guess. Um, and then what's my power going to be? 0.8 to the what? T over 3. OK. Here's something I, I will point out. I know it's 1050, but it'll only take a moment to finish. Um, e to the natural log of 0.8 is 0.8. And this here really, I know we did this before, but this really here is, really is here, this here is really 100 times e to the natural log of 0 0.8 to the t over 3. And that's just 100 times 0 0.8 to the t They're really the same. Right? It's not a lie. It's not like this is a difference. They're really literally the same thing, just written different ways. Okay, so now to answer the question, 
What's the half life? So what are we going to set the whole thing equal to? Oh, I already set the whole thing equal to. I want to find how long it takes until there's half of what I started left. I started with 100, so I'm going to set it equal to 50. So set 100 times 0 0.8 to the t over 3 equal to 50. I have to admit, I was never a fan of doing it this way. Like, this is the first thing I've tried this way. It's better. No lie. There are probably reasons why this is good, too. But as far as I can see, like, this just feels nicer. So divide both sides by 100. 0 0.8 to the t over 3. 50 over 100 is one half. Again, not a coincidence. It should be one half over there for finding the half life. Take the natural log of both sides. Bring down the t over 3. Divide, sorry, multiply both sides by 3. Divide both sides by the natural log of 0 0.8. And that would be, and it would be approximately, well, actually, before I say what it is approximately, I know that after another six days, I have another four fifths factor or 0 0.8. So 0 0.8 times eight is 64. And after another three days, sorry, I think I said 64. After another three days, I'd have a 0 0.8 times 64, which is eight times eight times eight is 512. So it'd be 51.2. And then after another 12 days, I'd or sorry, another three days, I'd probably have less than half, right? Almost for sure. I'd have 40 something. So I just want to point out that I don't have a calculator. Well, I mean, I do, but I that. But we know this should be somewhere between nine and 12 days. Question. Okay, can you actually 12 days uh, include the number for the food instead of like? I would prefer you don't. So yeah, that's a good question. You could the decimal approximation for k but when you're doing the calculations like if you were if you were solving this using this other expression here you really don't want to put a decimal approximation in for k until the very end yeah so don't don't approximate things if you have to find an approximation until the absolute last kind of after you've gotten to something like this then is when you should use the decimal approximation 